Never guess who we have along for the ride. We have a cast of thousands nearly. Shaquille O'Neal, Kenny the Jet Smith, Isaiah Thomas, and Jared Greenberg and Steve Smith are inside the bubble in Orlando. Shaq, we're going to start with you first because we just saw you and D. Wade with your bet. I see all of your, your bling in front of you presenting very well. What are your expectations for this matchup? You're familiar with both franchises. Yes, I'm very familiar with both franchises. And as a basketball fan, as a guy that hasn't played basketball in over 10 some of my years, I just want to see great basketball. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm aligned with both franchises. Both franchises gave me the ability to play, utilize my talent, and win championships. So I'm going to bow out and make some predictions on this one. Uh, I just want to see good basketball. Uh, I actually know it's going to be good basketball. And in a perfect world, this goes to seven games. And then the last game be one of the most memorable games in NBA history. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, advantages and disadvantages for both sides. But, you know, listen, I have my jersey retired in L.A., in Miami. And I just did that piece because they asked me to do it for the job. But, look, as a basketball fan slash analyst, I just want to see some great basketball. And good luck to the Miami Heat organization and good luck to the L.A. organization. But I'm going to pass to my good friend Isaiah, who has no alliances, with either Miami and LA, so I'm going to allow Isaiah Thomas to answer the question for me on who he thinks would, you know, is going to win this championship. But like I said, in a perfect world, <laughs> I would love to see this go seven. What you think, Zeke? Okay. I, I I think I think it goes uh, maybe five, but I think you're Lakers, uh, and you have Laker, Miami, all of y'all have the same culture, so it it really doesn't matter who wins. But let's just say this that. The traditional Laker culture will win the championship because the Laker culture is in the Miami Heat, and so are you, Shaq. I mean, you, you and you in LA and Miami, so you win either way it goes. Okay, and Kenny, we were gonna we're gonna get to you shortly, so don't get too excited. Hold on, we want to get to this role because we want to show you guys all of the things that LeBron James has done in the finals. We know. That it's been spectacular, starting back to his first appearance in the finals in 2007. A young pup, the age of 22, Spurs swept. Then in 2011, his first season with the Heat ended with the finals. Loss in game six to the Dallas Mavericks. On to 12 and 13, won his first title in 2012, defeating OKC. And then in 2014, the Spurs got revenge, downing LeBron James. 2015. The Warriors defeat the Cavs 4-2. to two. And then moving on to 2016, LeBron James and the Cavs had an amazing comeback from a 3-1 deficit against the Warriors. And then 17-18, and 18, Steph and KD took down LeBron's Cavs in back-to-back -back years. LeBron James has no extra motivation, he says, in playing his former team. Let's listen. No extra uh, meaning to winning a championship, no matter who you're playing against. It's already hard enough to even reach the finals, um, to be in this position. So if you're able to become um, victorious out of the finals, it doesn't matter who it's against. It's probably been the most challenging thing I've ever done as far as a professional. I would be lying if I sat up here and knew that everything inside the bubble, with what it would, you know, the toll that it would take on your mind and your body. And, and everything else, you know, I'm, I'm here for one reason and one reason only, and that's to compete for a championship. I've been as locked in as I've ever been in my career. Okay, you heard him talk about the mental toll, so that leads us right inside the bubble. Jared Greenberg, Steve Smith, I remember doing my time down there in Orlando. It is a <laughs> struggle to survive mentally and continue to work. So, to you, gentlemen, what say you about life inside the bubble? Well, Stephanie, you know, you know this, how different it all is down here. We know it's a new normal. You've heard all the cliches, but I just want to put it in perspective for people. At last year's NBA Finals between the Warriors and Raptors, the NBA issued more than 1,500 media credentials, 1,500. In what we call the green zone here, where Smitty and I have all access to the court, they've only allotted 30 30, 3 0 media credentials. So it is a different world here. And here's what's also different about LeBron and his team. It's rare in the NBA Finals, his 10th trip, that he is a favorite to win the championship. In fact, those in Vegas believe LeBron is a very heavy favorite. He's only lost as the favorite once. That was back in 2011. 
against the Dallas Mavericks. How much is on the line for LeBron against the Miami Heat? Well, I think, Jared, you kind of summed it up best. Let's, uh, let's, let's back up and, and talk about the mental toughness of being in this bubble. Uh, there's no fans. Like you said, there's no crowd. So whether it's the opposing crowd or your home crowd to get you up, and even great players love to go on the road and get those victories. That's when they shine the most. So the mental toughness for LeBron James has to be at an all-time high. Then we go to the physical. When you start to see the way he's playing at such an unbelievable level, and then I'm going to look at his numbers. What he's averaging in this playoff is pretty much better than the regular season numbers he's had this year and his career playoff numbers, which have been unbelievable special. And he's locked in because one thing I like right now is how he's finishing games, especially how he's finished the last game versus the Denver Nuggets. Stephanie coming up in a bit. Steve Smith sits down with Andre Iguodala. I'll chat with both head coaches who are just entering the building. I'll have a one-on-one -on -one with Coach Vogel and Coach Spolstra, and we'll check back in with you live here courtside in Orlando. Cannot wait. You guys keep it up. Appreciate you so much and all your effort. Okay, Kenny. Kenny the Jets. A slow start because the Lakers from the outside, they shot the ball well. Uh, you know, they were down. They came back. They really started shooting well. They was able to get the lead and keep the lead. But I agree with Isaiah. You know, the Lakers are bigger. They are faster. They are st stronger. But I uh, expect the Heat to come out with much more effort. You know, they don't want to hear that, oh, we're injured and, you know, we, we can't play. They, they are definitely going to compete. But the question is, and, uh, you know, for everybody out there watching, can the Lakers shoot the ball like that consistently to win a championship? Only time will tell. Well, you brought up the master of adjustments and head coach Eric Spolstra for the Miami Heat. Let's listen to what his postgame comments are. On uh, Goran or Bam, um, you already probably have the statement from uh, TD. Um, but regardless, uh, the Lakers set, you know, the, the tenor, the tone, uh, the force, the physicality. Um, you know, for the majority of the game, and and, and they just took control, and uh, we weren't able to, to get it back. First question here in the room, Tim, on the right. Eric, you've been through a lot of these, and you know that game one is, it's, a, it's often a feeling out game, and I mean, I think all three of the times you guys have won it, you've lost game one, but can, can this be a, a motivating point? Can this be just a, a, a wake-up call, a dose of reality? Like, how would you... It's, it's, comp it's high-level competition. Uh, so you have to do things with force and, and detail. Um, and, it, you know, it's a cliche, but every single possession counts. And um, there were, you know, there was too many possessions where it was either a poor offensive possession or a miss uh, that led to a couple poor possessions defensively or vice versa. Um, and, you know, those stacked on top of each other can get away from you pretty quick, uh, quickly against a, a, a very good team like this. We're much better than we showed tonight. Uh, you do have to credit the Lakers, and we'll get to work. Uh, Malik, oh, sorry. For the next one. Malik Andrews. Eric, could you just walk us through? It appeared, so, so Goran left with 6.04-ish left in the, in the second quarter. When did he exactly hurt himself? And it looked like he, if he did on the Rondo play, he stayed in for a little after maybe to test yeah, it out. What was your we recollection? We don't, I don't know, you know, right now. Uh, I know he's as tough as anybody uh, and it's the finals, um, but I don't have an update.